The challenges facing our teens today mean that more than ever, we need to be there to support them and encourage them. The Dr. Stem Show is here to provide discussions about topics that will help promote healthy relationships, self-image, and success for teens, parents, and the community. Our young people can achieve more in life than they ever dreamed possible. The Dr. Stem Show, hosted by Dr. Stem Malatini, will foster these discussions and encourage your participation. Finding your purpose that is determining what it is that you're supposed to do with your life is what we're talking about today. My guest says no man becomes great without making great mistakes. A quote by Bob Proctor. Welcome to the Dr. Stem Show. Welcome, Royal L. Ryden. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me today. It's such a blessing to be here with yes. you, Dr. Stem. Well, I'm excited I got your name right. Yes. Because after practicing, I did get it right. Yes, yes. Right? And you know, a lot of people get my name wrong sometimes. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I know. You, it was good. But I wanted to say it right. Royal L. Ryden yes. is the way you say it. It's a blessing to have you on the show today. Because what I want people to know, too, is that we all have a story. And you never know who you are sitting next to, standing next to, because one day they can become, you know, that motivator, that mentor that you want. I'm talking about your life and what it is that we're going to be discussing today. Yes. So before we start, can you at least tell the audience a little bit about you and who you are? Well, uh, I'm a poet, motivational speaker, life coach, youth mentor, and I embarked on a journey to inspire the masses, especially, especially the youth coming from broken homes just like me. Yes. I like that. And I think, you know, I should tell the audience, we met at a meeting which was a Toastmasters meeting. Yes. And that is for speakers because, as you know, I'm also a motivational speaker. I do coaching and youth, you know, speaking as well. So I was drawn to that because I knew that there was something that we needed to have yes, you yes, come to the show and talk about. You talk about coming from a broken home. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, my mother raised me alone yeah. uh, you know and she went through a lot you know she worked two jobs at a uh, two different factories you know sometimes you know the light was off sometimes we got eviction letters and you know I gave a lot of trouble she didn't speak any English so wow. you know I took advantage of that you know where was mom from where, I mean where is she from oh she's from Haiti yes. and you were born in New York yeah I was born in Brooklyn New York you know and I you know, because of the fact that, you know, I'm the only child as well. Yeah. And I was spoiled. And so I took advantage of her. And I gave a lot of hell in school. You know, she had to come to the school back and forth, in and out, in and out, to see the principal for me. And uh, it got worse as I got older. And I got in, you know, involved in, in the streets. Yes. You know, the wrong kind of activities. And uh one day, you know, I made that move and I moved to Massachusetts to kind of like better myself and, yeah. you know, get away from, you know, the streets in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. But, you know, it's insane. They, there's a saying that goes, it's insane to keep doing the same things and expect different results. So I left Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. But the mentality that I had came with me to Massachusetts. Ah, so how old were you when you moved to Boston? 18. You were still young. Yes. So I got into more trouble mm. when, I went to, when I came to Massachusetts. And things got even more hectic, got worse. And I found myself sitting behind a prison cell mm. for three years. Three years? Yes. And that's when reality hit me that I needed to make a change. Yes. Or else I would be back here again and again. And next time, it wouldn't be three years. Yeah. You yeah. Know. See, your story is a typical story for young minority men, you know, especially black men, yeah. where you're raised by a single mother. And while she's doing two, three jobs, 
you guys are going to school and getting in all, all kinds of trouble and then you know this um poverty that affects you know these young men as well and they cannot yeah. take that it's 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 hard for them so i think you're coming to this story to you know to this show today is a success story yes definitely definitely yeah. i just say uh, no man has become great without making great mistakes yes quoted from Bob proctor and I stand by that. Yes. Because to most, I was a lost soul. You know, to most, I wasn't going to make it past 21. Yeah. To most, I was a statistic. And, you know, if I had let myself believe that, I'd still be the same way. Yes. Yes. You know, and I fought hard to, to make that transition, to make that change. You know, because, you know, the... Your reputation sticks to you yeah. for a long time. So even if you're making the change, most people will still you will still perceive you as that same individual that you were. So it took a long time, you know. And you know, for other people who's making changes in their lives, they have to understand that change is a lifetime commitment. Yes. Yes. So we are talking to two different kinds of audience today, as I was discussing with you before the show. We are talking to those young people that are now starting to hang out and getting in trouble here and there and having their parents being called at the school and you know seeing themselves hanging around with the wrong crowd. We are also talking to those that have already been in trouble and they have served time, they have been arrested multiple times and now in their heads I'm sure like you were feeling probably lost. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. To those, to those young individuals, older individuals, yeah. I'll say, see, I always thought everything was about shortcuts. Mm. So anytime I, re I reached a, a roadblock, I'd want to take a shortcut. Yeah. I'd want to, you know, not work hard for what I had. I always wanted to find the easy way out. Yeah. You know, if, if it became a challenge, I didn't want it. Yeah. And it became a habit that I followed. But one thing I learned is if you do it right the first time, you won't have to do it the second time. The second time, yes. Just like in school. Yeah. You know, if you get a, a, a teacher gives you an assignment, mm. if you do it the, f the, the right way the first night, yeah. when you hand it in tomorrow, she won't tell you, go do it over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing, you know, that I, you know, I've learned on this journey. You know, no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts to success. Yeah. There's no shortcut. Life. What age were you when you came out? Because I'm sure once you came out, that's when you decided I'm going to change my life. Well, I came out at the age of 30. 30, that's, that's when you came out. Yes. So what we're saying to the young people today yes. is it doesn't have to take you 30 years to make that decision. decision. No, you don't, no, 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 you don't have to. It doesn't okay. have to take you 30 years. Yeah. Decision. You know, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. You know, we know what's right from wrong, we feel it inside. You know, sometimes we think we're too smart. Yeah. That we can, you know, outsmart other people, but you can't, you can't, out, you can't outsmart the law, you can't outsmart, you know, your maker, you know, and you can't outsmart yourself. I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine. What I want to do is, we're going to take a break, but I want to know, where is mom? What is she thinking today? Yeah. And has she seen these changes that are in you? We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Yes. Welcome back. Today we are talking about the life and journey of our guest, Royal L. Rodden. And before we went on break, I asked him to think about and talk about where mom is and how she's doing today because he just told us of how he started, you know, in Brooklyn, New York, came here into Boston, and boy, today he's a motivational speaker inspiring and empowering teenagers, especially young men that are out there not to repeat the life that he has gone through, but to be careful and to plan their life and be on purpose. So, mom, where is she and Oh, mom is still mom is still in New York. In New York, okay. Yes. Yeah, mom's still in New York. Mom loves New York, so she comes here. She spends comes here for you know a couple of months. And okay. At, at times, but she's mostly. What does she York. think of this transition now? Oh, she loves it. Right. Yeah, she loves it. You know, yeah. See, the funny story is, uh, my mom, she always wanted me to be a pastor. 
when I was a, a child growing up. She always wanted to be a pastor. So now when I speak to her, I say, Mom, you know, me and pastors, we do the same thing. We inspire people and we motivate people. So it's the same thing. Yeah. She's like, no, I still want you to be a pastor. But, you know, she's happy. She's, you know, she's happy. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely you happy. are ministering yes. uh, as, as you are. What's mom's name again? Raymond. Ra Raymond. Yes. Is that the first name or last name? F first name. First name, yeah. Raymond. Yeah, Raymond so, and Laura El Rodden. Oh, yes. yeah, that's true. You know what? I want your mom to know that, I mean, she raised you well, and I hope that she's proud of where you are today. Yeah, she did her best. She did, yeah. yeah, she did her best. Because a lot of the parents are struggling, and they see their young men exactly where you were, you know, at 15, 16, and 18, and I can tell you their knees are bruised from praying and asking God for mercy you know, and praying for them. So the reason why you're here today too is because of those tears and prayers that, yes, you know, they prayers had. Yes, kept me safe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those prayers did hold me. Right. You'd be surprised, uh, the, you know, the amount of things I went through and the, and the trouble I got into. Yeah. And how, you know, God saved me. So because of that, you know, I had to, you know, make a change. Yes. Do you find yourself speaking more in the church systems or the schools or is it a mixture? It's a mixture, you know. Okay. I'll, I'll speak wherever is required, okay. wherever is needed. Okay. You know, it, it can be me going into a, a you know a store and I see a, a young individual and I'll conversate with them. Yes. And, if, and if I could get a few words in, I get it in right there. If it's in a school, if it's in a program, if it's in a church, yes. Yeah, wherever wherever inspiration and motivation is needed, I'm there. Yeah. What are some of the topics, you know, if, if, if you don't mind, that you talk about when you're speaking to the young people? I speak to them about, you know, uh, life purpose. Okay. I speak to them about, you know, having you know, a blueprint in order to achieve success. I speak to them about, you know, change, making a transition. I speak to them about habits. You know, you know habits, are, habits are everything. Yeah. You yeah. Know, do you share your story with that, or yes. you, ha you have you, you do? Yeah, I do. You're comfortable sharing your yes, story with yes, them? Yes. Yes. You know, yeah. I'm comfortable with sharing my story because you know I have to be able to identify with them, and they have to be able to identify with me. Okay. And you know, and it's my story that got me this far. Yes. So you know, I I, I give it all. Yeah. I give it all to them, and you know, I, I allow them to ask me questions. And then we have like a, you know, a dialogue. Yes, yes. What are some, yeah, I know before we started the show, we were, you know, discussing some of the issues that are going on today, especially, you know, with the police and the young people being shot and, you know, the riots that we've had in the U.S. A any word, ab uh, you know, about that message, especially to the young people that are so discouraged, the young men out there? I'll say, you know, for one, yeah. number one is, you know, is wrong to take anybody's life. Yeah. You know, no matter the color, creed, it's wrong to take anybody's life. Yeah. But I say another thing too, um, it's important for us to pay attention to the kind of attitudes we carry, us, especially us minorities, mm -hmm. the attitude we have, you know? The, you know, a lot of us sometimes we walk around with, like we have a chip on our shoulder. We're always angry and people can read that. People yeah. can sense that, you know? Our youth, you know, walking around you know, with, with, with a limp. You know, the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves, you know. We have to ask ourselves sometimes, you know. If we dress a certain way, if we, you know, act a certain way, which is not an excuse. Yes. But if we carry ourselves a certain way, sometimes it attracts certain type of attention. Yeah. And, and most of the time, it's the attention that we may not want for ourselves. That's true. That's true. I'm always baffled. I'm from Zimbabwe. Yes. So I'm always baffled and amazed at how much the word respect Respect is yeah. is the word that has gotten a lot of young men and young women in trouble to the point of even you know being arrested because I want my respect and they're not respecting me. Any word on respect? Because I, I never understand it. Why is it that big a deal? It's a big deal. I mean, first off, yeah, you know, there's a there's a, like a, a, a law in the Bible. Okay, I think it's part of the Ten Commandments. It goes, you know, do unto others Excellent. as you would want others to do unto you. Yeah, and if you want respect, you have to give respect. You have to be the first one to give it, actually. Okay. You give it, you get it. You keep giving it until you get it back. And I think a lot of the times, for some of us, we don't respect ourselves. And it shows. So, you know, we, you, know you can't expect somebody to respect you if you don't respect yourself. Yeah. But then, I, you know, the thing about it is there are certain rules at home 
that you can't even question mom's, you know, rules that are there at home and say, well, she ain't respecting me, so I'm not going to respect her. You go to the school, they have certain rules at the school, and it's like, well, you can't even put the word respect there. The teachers don't respect me, and uh, you're there to learn as a student. Yeah, you're to learn. So, I, you yeah. know, I, that's why I'm saying, you know, to you as well, that I, I never understand why, you know, most young people will talk about respect and saying, well, you know what? I have to give respect to get, I have to get respect to give respect. Yeah. Especially, you know, I mean, if we have to give it that way. Because then are we saying to the young people that they have to get respect from the adults in order for them to give respect? Well, <laughs> see, that's very interesting. It's very interesting. Right? Uh, whatever you want out of life, yeah. you have to give it. Whatever you want out of life, you have to be it. Yes. You know, whatever you You're expect right. out of life, it has to be, it has to come from you. That's the law of life. If you want love, you have to be loved. Yes. And then love will appear all around you. Yeah. If you want respect, you have to be respectful and give respect. And respect will appear all around you. It starts with I. Um, you know, we have to take responsibility for our actions. Yeah. You know, and there's a, like, uh, there's a way I say, you know, um, if we blame other people yeah. for the things that happen in our life, that means that it's their fault. So which means they have to change while we remain the same. But if we take full responsibility for the things that happen to us, then we get a chance to look in the mirror. Then we get to change. You're right. You're right. I'm always saying to the kids, you know, when, when you're pointing at someone to say, man, you know, you're wrong, you know, you do it this way, right? Yeah. And how many fingers are pointing at that person? Three, four. Three or four are pointing back, back at, at me. Yeah, yeah. But one is that person yes. that I'm saying is wrong. So that means, you know, I got to check myself first. Check you know, I gotta put myself in check first. Yes. Are there any mentors, any people in your life that helped you to be, you know, to be where you are today? I'm going to, you know, um, I mean, I wanted to have you discuss that as well because then I think mentorship is really a oh, big it's, thing it's that might be helpful for these young people to hear. Extremely important. Yeah. Mentorship, extremely important. I'll go, okay, let me see. For example, yeah. whatever you wanna do with yourself, whatever you, you wanna do with your life, there's somebody out there who's done it before. Yeah. You know, sometimes mentorship can be through a book. Sometimes mentorship can be through a teacher, yeah. a, a professor, a counselor, anybody who, you know, who's on the path that you want to get. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there's also wrong kind of mentors as well, too. You're right. I want you to name some mentors that have been there and some that are continuing to uplift you and motivate you so we're going to take another quick break and yes. we'll be right back yes we are talking today about finding your passion as i said at the beginning we're talking about how to determine what it is that you're supposed to do i'll tell you one thing i'm very very impressed to have my guest today to have someone who had been ruled out in high school because of his actions and what he was doing you heard him say my mom was being called to the school all the time because i was bad mm -hmm. and i called him no you were being radical and he said yes ma'am you, you can use that one radical so if you're out there and you think you know what i'm bad anyway they think i'm bad and nobody believes that you know there's something good at me royal is here to say to you guess what there is greatness in you, you right yes, yes, there's greatness within you you know there is so much greatness within you yes and it's possible yeah. to become whatever you want to be no yeah. matter how far behind you may think you are yes. in life yeah. you know there's still room to make adjustments you know we just have to one of the things that i like to speak yeah you know to these young folks about to people about in general yeah. is purpose mm -hmm. you know what do you want to do with yourself yes that's very important. Okay, and it's okay if you don't know what you want to do with yourself now. Yes. But you know, it's, it's start thinking about it. What do you want to do with yourself? What do you love to do? You know, and then create a plan for it. Create a blueprint. Yeah. Cause that's some of the things that help me get to, you know, where I am now. And yes. I have a formula that I I like to give. Okay. To people, mm -hmm. you know, whoever's listening, whoever's watching, is purpose plus blueprint equals success. Purpose plus blueprint equals success. Yes. 
Perfect. Before we want to break, I had asked you to name some mentors or what has you know, mentored or motivated you. So can you tell us some of the people that have mentored you? Dr. Stem. Dr. Stem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. Stem. You yeah. know, um, mm -hmm. Before we started, you know, you were speaking to me. Yeah. You know, the, the, the mentoring was happening there. Yes. Um, I get mentoring through books, through the books that I read, uh, through the motivational videos that I watch on YouTube. You know, it, it's funny about the world, and it wasn't always like that. Yeah. Like, you can type anything on the computer, and whatever you're looking for, it will appear. You know, so there's no excuse. You know, you can find mentoring in school, your teachers, your professors, your counselors. Yeah. You know, you can go to these programs, you know. If there are people out there who are willing to help. Yeah, yeah. So, finding your purpose. We have a formula, purpose, blueprint, and success. success. A little bit about that. How can they find their purpose? Okay, finding your purpose, okay? You know, for me, for example, you know, what are some of the things that you love to do? What are some of the things that you do on a daily basis, you know? And you can figure out how you can survive off of those things. Yeah. You know, like for me, I love to talk to people. I love to inspire people. I love to help people get from one step to the next step. Yeah. And I'm a motivational speaker. Yeah. You know, for some people it's singing, for some people it's dancing, for, for some people it's writing, for some people, you know, it's helping other children, you know. So whatever, you know, your purpose is, you know, I, I'd say the things that you love to do and you can cultivate a life from that. So for those young people that are looking at you as a coach to say, you know what, I want him to coach me, or the schools, the programs, you know, nonprofit programs that want to book you for speaking engagements, yes. how can they do that? They can find me at royallrodden at gmail.com, R-Y-L-O-R-O-Y-A-L-E. <laughs> L-R-A-D-I-N uh -huh. at gmail.com. Excellent. We're going to have that at the bottom as well. Yes, yeah. I have so much uh, emails. Yeah. No, I'm saying the wrong one. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, you can find me that way. You yeah. can also find me at Royal L. Rodden at uh, dot com, yeah. YouTube, Instagram. I use Instagram a lot. Oh, you do yes. Instagram a lot. Yes. Okay. okay. Facebook as well. Yes. Thank you for those postings because I'm one of your fans. I'm always reading the inspiring quotes that yes. you put up there. Oh, yeah. So those are really good. Inspiring quotes. And, and yeah. it's a part of a book that I have, you know, that's going to be published in March, sometime in March. Okay, because my next question yeah. was, do you have a book? So what's the title of the book? The, the name of the book is Before My Mama Goes. Before My Mama Goes. Yes, Before My Mama Goes. And what is that about? That title alone is catchy. Yes, Before My Mama Goes. The reason why I named it Before My Mama Goes is because for all my life, for the majority of my life, I gave her hell. So, you know, my, my only wish for her is before she goes is for her to be happy and to be satisfied with the man that she raised. And for her to see that, you know, yes, I raised a successful Young man. The world is listening, and that camera is yours. Yes. Talk to mama. Yes, you know, if my mom watches this, I want her to know that she did a great job, a wonderful job. She did a, the best she can, yeah. the best way she knew how. And, you know, it may have taken a long time for me to, you know, recognize the sacrifices she made, but I'm here. I'm here now. You know, they say, fall down. Seven times, get up eight, and I'm up right now, and I understand, and I appreciate it. And the goal is to show her that I appreciate it, and that's why the title of the book is called Before My Mama Goes. I didn't hear what I wanted to hear. What did you want to hear? Mom, I, I love you. And I am? Blessed. And sorry. <laughs> sorry, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, Mom, sorry, Mom. I am sorry. I wanted that yes. to be the first thing that you say, you know what, if my mom is watching, I am sorry for what See, I put you through. I'm sorry for what I put her through, and it's important, yeah. you know, sorry is just not enough. I have to show her that. You know, I have to show her that through my actions. Because yeah. sometimes we say sorry, Yeah. you know, but sorry doesn't really fix anything unless our actions are showing that. You're right.
that was sorry. You're right. And my heart and my work and everything I do with the teenagers is to not come to a point where we say, Mama, I'm sorry. Yes. For them to understand from people like yourself now to say, you know what, Mama knows what she's doing. She yeah. knows how she's helping you. So please work with Mom. Yeah. Please listen, listen to, mom. to Mom. Because she knows. Yes. She knows. And yes, and to get back on the on the, the formula, yeah. so it says purpose blueprint plus blueprint equals success. success yeah. You find your purpose, after yeah. you find your purpose, then you create a blueprint for it. You know, because you know, you have to have a plan. You have to have, you know, a uh, direction for where you're going. Yes. After you create a blueprint, then you will be successful. Yes. You can't keep it all on here. You have to put it down. On paper. On paper. And write it out. And write it out. And then visualize it, and then it will come to life. One yes. last word before we end the show. You won't believe it is ending. Oh, wow. It feels <laughs> like we just got on. I know. Yes. I know. One last word that you might want to, you know, impart to the teenagers out there. I like to tell them, you know, habit is everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. You know, plant productive seeds. You know, pay attention to your actions. Pay attention to your surroundings. You are your surroundings, and your surroundings are you. You know, don't think that, well... He or she's doing this, I'm not gonna do it. It'll rub off. Yeah. If you don't wanna be involved with something, it's okay to walk away. That's not being a punk. Being being a punk is doing the things that you don't wanna do. And you know, that's what that's what being a punk is. Yeah. Being real, you know, the so called term that they have of being real, being real is staying true to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, being yeah. honest with yourself and everybody else around you. That's what real is. And if, if you don't wanna get involved with certain activities, it's okay. To say you don't want to do it, you know. So. You have been a blessing. Yes. It was great having you. I hope that all those that will watch this over and over again will understand and know that you have a story to tell. There's greatness in all of us. You never rule yourself out. Yes. And one day you will be the person on TV yes. inspiring other people. So thank you for what you do. Yeah. May the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you so much thank for having you. me. Here. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? Thank you for watching the Dr. Stem Show.